everyone is looking for answers. But by the end of this talk, we're going to realize that it's questions that really matter. Because questions rule the world. There are five questions that rule the world. These five questions rule the world because these five questions rule every person. These five questions rule every person because everything we do to seek meaning and fulfillment in our lives are driven by these five questions. And though all these five questions are powerful, some of these five questions are more powerful than others. But what all these five questions have in common is they each carry an idea. The first is the idea of identity, which begs the question, who am I? The second is origin, where am I from? The third is purpose, why am I here? The fourth is potential, what can I do? And the fifth is destiny, where am I going? I find purpose to be the most interesting of these five ideas because purpose clarifies identity, purpose connects with origin, purpose gives us hope for potential, and purpose gives us the courage to pursue our destiny. I'd like to highlight potential, and I'd like to highlight purpose. I believe most of us struggle to find our purpose or achieve our full potential in life because we focus on the wrong person and the wrong timeline. I believe if we are to find our purpose, we must first start by looking at what would life look like without us in it? What would not be done? Who would not be impacted? I believe if we are to find our purpose, we must all as individuals strive to answer the question, what is life minus you? When I was in the fourth grade, second term, we moved to a new city. And I remember the day before my first day of school, dad came and gave me a letter and he said, make sure you give this to the senior teacher on duty. And he sat down and he, became, he began to draw a map. And as he drew this map, he could tell by the look on my face that I was not so comfortable with this whole idea of the map thing. This was pre-Google Maps. And he handed me the map and he said, you can do this, just stay on the path and everything will be okay. The next morning, slightly past 6 a.m., I was on my way. The last thing I wanted to do was to be late on my first day at a new school. What I believed was that class would start at 7. I followed the map past the church, down a winding road, and I came to a stream, which had a bridge across it. And as I crossed the bridge, I came into a park. And as I looked through the park, I saw a path that cut through the park that went round a hill. And because of the hill, I could not see how far the park stretched out for. And up along the path, I saw a pack of six dogs. These dogs did not look friendly. And these dogs did not have collars. And I waited, hoping that somebody would come by and would face the dogs together. And after about eight to 10 minutes of waiting, two more dogs came and joined the pack. <laughs> I picked up a rock and held it close to my body, and I held down tightly on the strap of my bag, and I said to myself, you can do this, just stay on the path, and everything will be OK. And I started walking up to this pack of dogs. Multiple sprints later, I show up at the school. I get to the senior teacher's office, and I present the letter. And they're like, oh, today your class doesn't start till noon. So you can either go back home and come back later, or if you want to wait, you can sit in the school hall. There's some drama rehearsals going on there. I went to the school hall, and as I sat and watched the play, I began to look around. And when I looked up to the ceiling, 
I could see inscriptions, handwritten names in the ceiling. This ceiling had to be at least seven meters off the ground. And I thought to myself, how on earth did they get their names up there? And my next thought was, how on earth will I get my name up there? <laughs> and this was the first time I ever thought about what I would leave behind. And over the years, I came up with a visualization to help me deal with making big decisions and thinking about what I'd leave behind. And I call it the pie chart of forever. The way the pie chart of forever works is if we get since the beginning of human existence to date, and we plot those years as a pie chart, and then we get your life from birth to date or death, and we cut that piece out of the pie chart called forever, how big would that piece of the pie be? As you can see, we're not doing so well. But what if we got everything you did in your life as opposed to the time you spent in life? And everything that did in other people's lives. And we put all those timelines together. I believe we'd start to see something that's a bit more impactful, something that's more significant. And better still, hundreds of years from now, when people look back at our lives, maybe they'll be able to see that from the work we did and the impact we made in other people's lives, we're we were able to outlive ourselves. If we look at the case of Leonardo da Vinci, the man lived for 67 years. 497 years later, most of us still have a good idea of who the man was and what he did and the influence of what he did in the world. Now, this does not mean you need to go and paint the next Mona Lisa or become a great inventor. You could simply take a step closer to home and start looking at the people around you, your family, your friends, leading where you are, leaving behind wisdom and bodies of work, and we may start to see that we too can outlive ourselves. But obviously the question is, what about me? Because it's about me, right? I think we need to move from the idea of purpose being a one-dimension thing to a multi-dimensional idea. After all, who is the great athlete without the fans? Who is the artist without the audience? Who is the great leader without the followers? And who is, what is the multi-million dollar corporation without the customers? And you showed up. And you have oh, everyone around you on this journey called life. But we get so caught up in winning the race that we start to fail at our responsibilities and accountabilities. And we start to lose friends and eventually even our families. And then it ends. It ends with you having succeeded at making a living, but having failed at making a difference to the people around you. But we must insist. And so I took a look at the best person, the best person to give feedback in terms of what purpose is. And this is the dying. So I googled the regrets of the dying, and I found multiple websites. And I picked up the most common threads across these sites. And what I found is that from the most common themes, we can see that there's an even balance between me and what I'm supposed to do for everybody else. And now you're here today. And you have all these things that help you get up and go. And the things that, as a result of you chasing your get up and go, spill over to other people's lives. I think we need to start thinking more closely and more deeply about the limited amount of time that we have. 
and about what we are going to leave behind. James Bryce, an academic, jurist, and historian, once said that the worth of a book is measured by what you can carry away from it. And in the same way, I believe that the worth of a life is measured by what it leaves behind. And this causes problems for the whole potential thing. Remember, I have the rock on my side. I'm holding on tightly to the strap of my bag, and I'm walking after this pack of eight dogs, saying to myself, you can do this. Just stay on the path, and everything will be OK. And as I got to the point where the dogs were, my heart had moved from my chest to my throat, of course. The dogs ran off, playfully ran off. They were not afraid of me. And at this point, I could see past the hill. And past the hill, there was two girls in a school uniform. There was a lady standing behind them and a gentleman to my far right. And they had been standing there waiting for somebody to come by or for the dogs to run off. And the second I locked eyes with the two schoolgirls in the uniform, I twisted my body and I dropped the rock. And my next step was the physical embodiment of what we call in today's world swag. I don't know what your map is. I don't know what your park is. I don't know what your hill is. But I do know that the school is your dream. And I do know that the dogs are the excuses, the fears, and the challenges that have kept you hoping and waiting for somebody to come by. And if only we can take the courage to step up and do what needs to be done. Our actions will give courage to the people waiting on the other side of the hill to step up and get where they need to go as well. And maybe we need to change our mindset from looking at life as this birthday party where everybody in it has shown up to give us gifts to a mindset where we see ourselves as gifts to the challenges, fears that we see in everyone else around us. Winston Churchill said that occasionally men stumble upon the truth and they quickly pick themselves up and dust themselves off and hurry along as though nothing ever happened. And the truth is that tomorrow, today will be one more step in your past and one less step left in your future. And if you cannot step up because there's challenges in front of you, know that if a step does not challenge you, that step will not change you. And since we're all looking for answers, I'm going to leave you with a question. What is life minus? you. Thank you.